Hi folks, we got Mitchell here. I'm going to do another video today. Uh, this one is going to be on maple cotton candy. So I did a video on uh, maple sugar sticks and it took right off. We're pushing half a million hits on that right now. So it is maple season here. I thought, what the heck, let's do something fun and why not do cotton candy with a little bit of a twist. So I got some little paper cones and I'm going to show you guys how to make cotton candy at home. No machine, no fuss, no nothing. So. We're going to jump right in her and I hope you guys right, like it. Here we go. So the first thing you're going to need is sugar. I got the camera pointed down here at the pot so you can see it. So just grab any pot that you want out of your cupboard. We're going to do two and a half cups of sugar. So I've got my cup right here. I mean this recipe can be give or take but you want to stay pretty close. One. Two. And we'll do a half cup. This is a really fun recipe. The kids are going to love it. And a half. So that's two and a half cups of sugar. Check. We'll put this over here. Next up, we're going to do a half cup plus two teaspoons of water. Okay? So that's simple, simple. Doesn't have to be hot, doesn't have to be cold. Half cup, and I put it a little bit over to get my, uh, my two tablespoons, teaspoons doesn't really matter we're just trying to give enough liquid in the pot to make sure that the sugar doesn't burn to the bottom so that's not really the end of the world and we're gonna do some corn syrup and we need half a cup of corn syrup I'm just using the golden stuff uh, you can use the clear stuff if you don't want to actually have color on the cotton candy but I really don't care at all it all tastes the same there we go half a cup I'm just going to get a little spatula here so we can scoop that out or a wooden spoon. Alright. So this is our basic mixture. It's pretty simple stuff. You can see inside the pot there, water, corn syrup, and sugar. And I'm going to cook this on the stove and I'll come back okay, to you when so she's ready. I got ready. my pot on the stove. I've got my mixture that I just showed you in it. Now one of the things you need is a candy thermometer, okay? You can buy these at bulk barns and all kinds of different stores. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take it I'm going to stick the end of it in my mixture and just let it sit to the side. Now the point of this is there's different stages when it comes to candy making. There's soft crack, there's hard crack, there's a whole bunch of different ones. We're going to take this up to 320 degrees. This is very important, okay, that you remember that number, 320 degrees. So I'm going to let this go and when it changes color and gets to that point, I'll come back and show okay, you. Okay, so she just started to boil. I've been stirring this the whole time, okay, that's very important. So you just keep on stirring. You're going to see that the, t the thermometer, I've got it clipped, but the temperature is rising. I'm already at 220 degrees. Now it goes to 220 pretty quick and then it's going to take a few minutes to get up to 320, but you need to be watching this. Now uh, something to be mindful of, when you're dealing with candy or making candy, you do not want to spill water into this mixture, okay? It can actually be a little bit explosive. So once it gets to that 320 degrees, you got to think, this is way above boiling. It's super, super, super hot. And if you throw water in there, it'll actually kind of uh, splatter out and spray. It's really not a good deal at all. So make sure you're mindful of that. But there she goes. She's cooking away. And I'll come okay, back when so it's ready. still cooking away. I've got her at about 265 degrees. Now, I just told you about not adding liquid to this once it gets to 320. Well, I'm not there yet, but I want to add my maple to it. So I've got a shot of it right here. It's just a maple extract is what I'm using. This stuff is super powerful and it adds tons of flavor. I want to add about a tablespoon. That's a good tablespoon. Well, see what I mean about adding water to it? That might have been a little too much, but there we go. That's perfect, actually. I can smell it, too. Oh, it smells great. So at this point right now, we've got some maple candy going on right now. We're at 270 degrees and she's going in the right direction. We've got a little bit of a dark color, but that's because of the maple that we've added. And as soon as we get to the happy place, we're going to add some food coloring as well, but we're going to cool it down a little bit and I'll show you that as okay. we get there. Here's the next stage. So I've got that cooking on the stove. You want to go and get yourself a whisk. This is a main tool that we're going to be using to make this happen. Now here's the deal, okay? This is a pretty cheap, flimsy whisk. You don't want to go buy one that's super hardcore steel or whatever, aluminum, because we're going to be cutting this. So buy something that's flimsy and, you know, and the trick is, use whatever you got. You can use snips, 
you can use pliers, it don't matter, just use whatever you got and you're going to go in and you're going to snip off the tops, okay? So snip one. And what we're essentially doing here is we're creating our piece that we're going to use to drip all the candy down and make that uh, the strains of cotton candy. So just keep clipping away at it. Try not to bend it all to pieces. Add another one. Another one. And they don't all have to be perfect, but you want them to try to be in the same kind of area because we're going to be dipping it all together. So there you go. You can see I made that. I actually have a couple that are too small. So I'm going to shave it down so that they all match. Bear with me for a second. I don't want these shooting all over the house. I got a little guy here, and the last thing I need is him to be eating that. One more. Two more. Another one. There we go. And now we've made our tool, okay? So you want to keep it close together like that. I don't want it all spread out. That is where I want that to be. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Okay, folks, so here's a little trick that I want to show you guys. It's important when you're doing candy making. <coughs> Excuse me. It's important when you're doing candy making that once you take it to the temperature that you're trying to get it to, you want to make sure you can stop it right in its track. So we don't want it to overcook and go further past the 320. So I'm going to show you here on the, on the stove once we get to that. But once we hit 320, we need a bowl of cold water and then the bowl that you're planning on pouring the mixture in. Both of these need to be glass or stainless steel, something that's not going to melt. Because if you pour 320 degree sugar in a plastic bowl, it's going to be the worst day of your life, okay? So you, when you do this, you want to put it in the bowl ahead of time, making sure that it'll, it'll fit. On top of that, you want to push down on the bowl, okay? So I'm pushing down right now because I want to make sure that once I fill this with the weight of the sugar, that I don't have water pouring all out from around the side. So you can adjust. I actually have a little bit too much in here, but I'll just pour a little bit out. So you want to get this stuff ready ahead of time. So that way, see, that's perfect. I can push it right down to the rim and it's not spilling. You want to get this done ahead of time because you don't want to be messing with that when that's ready. Okay, okay? let's move on to our next step. Wooden spoons, okay, you need two of them, two, and you need a book, which I have right here, okay? Sorry about the weird angle. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spoons, open your book up so it's about halfway, and I want to put my spoons inside the book, about even width apart, we can see that. That's pretty straightforward right there. This is your setup, okay? Now we need newspaper, which I've got right here. Don't uh, skimp out on the paper, okay? The idea of this is it's gonna protect the floor because you're gonna have some strands of it that are dangling down and you don't wanna have to be cleaning this for a year afterwards. So all we're gonna do, just throw some paper down on the floor. Quick and easy, no problem. I like to make sure that the book that I'm using there, it's a piece of cake. Is far enough out off the counter so that when I'm actually doing it, it's going to go down on the floor. It's not actually going to uh, get all over everything, right? So we got our newspaper on the floor. We've got our spoons there, and we're just about ready to go to the next step. Okay, folks. So I just hit my 320 degrees. It's kind of hard to show you, but there's my thermometer, and I've actually gone up and over 320 by a little tiny bit. So I want to take this. That's my mixture, and I want to pour it into my bowl. And it is hot, okay? So you need to make sure that when you're dumping this in here that you're being very mindful of what you're doing. You know, you absolutely do not want to spill this stuff on yourself. So put that in the sink. Uh, as far as cleaning of the bowls and such goes, you want to make sure that uh, you just soak it in water and you'll be okay. Trying to clean that as it is, it's not a go. Uh, I want to put on gloves, okay? So I do this just for protection for my hands. Uh, when you're doing uh, pulled sugar and stuff like that, usually they put on a couple pairs of gloves. Now with pulled sugar, you would actually be uh, molding it your hands, molding it with your hands, or you'd wear five or six layers. For me, I'm going to put on two, just in case I make a mess. Uh, at this point in time, I'm not going to add food coloring to this batch because I want it to be just plain maple. We're making maple cotton candy. I mean, that is just beautiful. So let's go right at it. I'm gonna take my spoon out, put that in the sink. And let's get our unit out. Here's the concept. We're gonna take this, this is the tool that we made. We're gonna dip it inside. And you're gonna get used to this. As it thickens, you'll know where you're at. We're gonna take it and you're just gonna go like this. 
and you're going to wave it over the top and it's going to create strands. Now as this cools and gets thicker, the strands will get better and you'll start to see them more and you'll be able to work and figure out consistencies. There we go, beautiful. There we go again. And I can see the strands starting to form over the two uh, and I like to wrap it around just to break it off. Get it right in there for a nice dunk, little drip. And here we go again. And you can, I don't know if you can, if you can see a good shot of that. Let me see if I can adjust that real quick for you so that you can see it. Oh, well, you're in there. There you go. See it dangling on there? Let's keep going at this. This is gonna be fantastic when it's done. It takes a few minutes to do, but I mean, whatever. We're making cotton candy. Here we go. Yeah, you can see it's starting to get thicker. So it's creating a little bird's nest on here. And you can add food coloring to this as well at the beginning. You know, if you want to make red, which I might make a few more of these, but if you wanted to make red or blue or green or whatever color you want to do, that's no problem. You just want to add the food coloring at the beginning or you want to add it once this has cooled considerably. So, try to let it drip. There we go, strands and wave it. As far as the book that you're using here, as a plan, either wrap it with a bag or use a book you don't overly care about because what's going to happen is you are going to get uh, you're going to get sugar all over it and you know if that's the case you've ruined your book, right? There we go. You can see as it starts to cool, you get to that right temperature. And once you've done this a few times, you can actually play around with it and you'll you'll know, hey, I don't want to start doing my ribbons here until uh, it gets to a certain point, right? Look at that. One more. I'll just do a small one for you and then I'll do some off camera and I'll come back and show you. But you can see the idea right there. We've created our little nest. So we've got that taken care of. Now what we're going to do, I've created some cones or I've made some cones here out of paper. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to get it off of here without losing it all. And then I'm going to wrap it. Look at that. I'm going to wrap it on my stick. And here we go. Let's see if I can get it together. And there we go. We've made some cotton candy on a stick. It doesn't have much color to it, obviously, because we did maple. But that right there is cotton candy. And I've got a whole bunch more here, too. And you just stick it, and it all sticks to it. We got some kind of crappy camera work going on here, but let's pull it back. There we go. Look at that. That's candy. So I'll do a few more and then I'll come back All and show right, you. Let's do another red. So we got, I heated it up a little bit. I still think it's a little thick, but you'll have to heat it here and there to make sure you're going to the right place. You want it stringy, okay? That's the whole trick, stringy. So here we go, another one. Look at that. Actually, that's going pretty good right there. Nice little bird's nest action going on. Here we go. Yeah, you see that? That's really nice and stringy. That's where we want to be with this. Keep your things spread nicely apart, though. Little drip. And swivel. So it doesn't make the big, full, thick, puffy ones. But you know what? It makes little ones. The kids love it. You want to do it quick and keep it somewhat nestable here so that you can actually put it on the roll but this is working great nice color here we go really nice really nice so let's put another cone on grab one of those and I'll just bring it up and wrap two hander there we go we got another one look at that so there's my cotton candy on a stick like I said, it's not big and fluffy like at the fair, but this is homemade, it's fun, and it makes really nice cotton candy. All right, folks, so that's the finished product. Like I said, uh, it's a little tricky to make. You know, you have to get the feel for it, but that there is homemade cotton candy. It tastes wonderful. I mean, it really, it really is good. It's very, very, very good. So that's the, the maple one there, and we've got a red one as well that we made. You know, there, like I said, it doesn't look like the cotton candy you get at a festival, but it tastes, it tastes good. It's got a crunch to it. The kids are going to love it. So I hope you enjoyed that. 
We're going to keep on making videos, and I hope you liked them. Thanks very much. Okay, folks, so that's my video. It was a little bit tricky to do it while I'm using the camera. You're trying to rush through everything. Usually it's a little bit smoother when I do that activity, but uh, I think all in all it turned out well. It's a great recipe. Kids love it. This is our final product. So we actually did get something that resembles cotton candy. It's got a nice crunch to it, and it tastes nice and mapley. And I've got the red one here as well. Red one didn't turn out as good as the other one, but it's still nice. It's got a cotton candy thing to it. So I hope you enjoy, and thanks very much.